Hey guys, I'm Callie Lewis. And I am John P. We are doing something a little different today. Yes, we are. Actually, We're so doing a reverse interview situation here. Exactly. Here we have Ian from Future Insights, but in reality, Ian is flipping the tables on us and he's going to interview us. Why don't you tell him why, Ian? Uh, other than the fact that I'm in charge. Uh, right. uh, exactly. We're thrilled to have you guys uh, as the keynote speakers for the Future of Web Apps Conference in London. Uh, that's October 23rd through 25th. And then for the developers and your fans who the government is barring either from entering the UK <laughs> or leaving the United States, you're also uh, going to be at the Ultimate Developer event, which is in November uh, from the 20th to the 22nd. So um, we're I'm very much looking forward to the opportunity to get into the bottom of just who you guys are and uh, and oh. what it is that you have to say about the future of web apps and other things. So. The bottom of who we are? That sounds scary. Yes. I'm That's a deep, dark deaf. place, Ian. I am raring to show that off. <laughs> Callie never lets me show that off. Well, this is the perfect opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're very excited to uh, do both conferences and meet you in person and meet the whole entire team and uh, see everyone who's going to be joining that. Actually, that we're going to have meetups in both locations yeah. as well if you can't get to the conference, which I don't know why you wouldn't. By the way, did, did we mention that the one in the U.S. is in Boston? I think he did. Yes, I think we did say Boston. Okay, okay. You're not listening to him just like you don't listen well, to me. Well, it's because he didn't say it right. You got to say Boston. Really? Where they park the cars. Boston. Boston. You're not saying it right. I'm sorry. Come on, guys. Say I'm it sorry. Right. I didn't say it right. <laughs> All right. All so, right. So, how does this? Uh, so do we need to lie down on the couch? How does this work, Ian? How does this work? Well, I'm curious. Your session title for FOA is called uh, "The Future: Zombies, Robots, and Ice Cream." Uh, those are three of my favorite things, but all three can kill you. So, I'm curious if your talk is going to focus on the more deadly aspects of those three killers or something else. Is uh, What are we going to get from something like that? Well, that is a very good question. And our discussions in general do usually center around the concept of death. So, and they usually end in death as well. That's true. There's for a lot somebody. Of, there's a lot of death going on. <laughs> Um, and yesterday, for example, we did a lot. We did a daily show. There were there were both zombies. Uh, well, not there, there was were there was a, there were brain eating robots. There was a mention of zombies. There were robots, and there was eating of brains. But although, the bad parts of brains. Although technically, you know, you can still live and have some of your brain eaten. So I That's don't know. True. I don't really know what that means. <laughs> but I do know that is an exciting future development. So is what's a better development platform? A zombie, a robot, or a bowl of ice cream? Mm. Oh, mix all three of them to get no. Um, that won't work. <laughs> um, robots, definitely. Why not? You I think mean, so? Yeah. No because way. Because you can do so much with them. Zombies, only, they have a limitation. You are forgetting about ice cream. He threw ice cream in the mix. I can mix like <laughs> vanilla, chocolate. Don't you dare mix fruit in there. Yeah, I could throw oh, some no. strawberries in there. That is just wrong. Chocolate. In my book. You could put nuts on it. I wouldn't. Stick a banana in there. There is no doubt, unequivocally, ice cream is the best development platform. I disagree. All right. My Fair first enough. job was. So, actually, what do you think is the future of no. web apps? you know, uh, other than, of course, virtual ice cream development. So what's what's the future of uh, applications on the web and for the web? You want to do the funnier or real answer here? Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 he stopped me. I both. just, I have no right, answer right. for that. <laughs> we are going to be actually talking a lot about the future of web apps and where people can go with uh, what we're seeing here today. I mean, there are so many things happening today that will drive the future. But, I mean, we're going to be talking, you know, 10 years out, a decade out. And so we're going to try and give people a, an idea of what you're seeing, like, a lot of different types of things, like health and fitness stuff. Um, you're seeing medical improvements. You're seeing all these different trends. Household in automation. Web, yeah, and, and, and in the web services and all of that. 
10 years down the road, it's going to look entirely different. Well, let's put it this way. Already today, we are seeing things that we never imagined in the past would make their way onto the web from a control uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, we're getting data fed to the web by all kinds of devices about all kinds of things that we didn't imagine. We're being able to manipulate that data and interact with that data and report on that data and trigger events with that data. Everything so, is more efficient, it's, it's better processed, um, faster obviously. So as far as the future of web apps is concerned, I think what we're really talking about is what is the future of how we're going to live our lives? Yeah. Because today we've only we're only seeing the very tip of the iceberg. So that is truly as Callie mentioned one of the things we're going to touch on is what all areas of our lives might we expect to see uh, movement towards the web on? And, and, you know, developers often focus on what's trending now, what's hot right now, and try and jump on those bandwagons. Like, for example, it's easy. when Angry Birds came out, you oh, know, yeah. everybody tried to kind of jump on that bandwagon. But one thing that you always have to do if you're going to be successful, you can be successful riding on the coattails, but if you can look out to, to the future and kind of get ahead of the curve and release when it's time, there you go. You're, you are the Angry Birds. Let's put it this way. You can be successful in the short term by jumping on the bandwagon. Right. But if you really want to blow this thing up, you got to get ahead of it. Yeah. So uh, for the Ultimate Developer event, uh, General Motors is actually bringing a car to show off uh, why cars are the next generation of application yeah. uh, development. Um, you know, they're on star system. They're looking for developers to build apps for it. So I was curious what you thought the best app could be for, for while you were driving. What would be something that's incredibly convenient to have uh, as an app in your car while you're driving? Well, I think one of the, the main things that we're looking for in a car, which is a struggle all around, is the ability to... It's movies, okay? We, we need oh. to be able to watch movies. I need a heads-up display right there in the front, but instead of projecting my speed and my cruise control and all that, I just want to watch a movie. I think that would be incredibly convenient for me. It would allow me to be entertained. It would be... Yes, it would. It would be great. While you're driving or in the passenger seat? Oh, he's talking about while he's driving, of course. Yeah. Uh, so what I might see, my next question was, what would be the most disastrous app possible? So we know John's answer for that. No, Callie, uh, no, 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 that's not even, that, that's not the most disastrous. The most disastrous app possible would be email. Because I don't want to be, my entertainment to be interrupted by work. <laughs> that's fair, that's fair. Yeah. How about you, um, well, <laughs> me, I don't really want to watch a movie while driving, uh, but I would like to be able to be productive. See, he doesn't like work getting in the way of his entertainment. I don't like entertainment getting in the way of my work. But uh, I would like to be able to more efficiently do my email, do my, uh, you know, ta answer texts, uh, dictate, and have, you know, all, everything that's on my phone integrated into the car itself so that I can come, come in, keep going with whatever email I'm writing and leave and have it on my mobile phone. So all Here's that integration is my ideal. She wants to be able to wake up in the morning to Ooh. her information being presented <laughs> yes. to her, read to her, yeah. whatever. She wants to like walk out of her house and have uh, the intelligence go from her house uh -huh. to her phone. So no, that while I'm walking yeah. to the car, I can you keep can't going. Have, you can't have downtime when you're walking, of okay? Of course not. So you walk to the car, then as soon as you open <coughs> the door to the car, the car takes over. Yes. Then as soon as you get out of the car, your phone takes over. As soon as you walk into work, your office takes over. And people say, my priorities are screwed up. See, I don't think we're actually that far from that. I think we're maybe 10 years away from that being completely possible in the normal. You know, the already right now, I think your phone can sync with all of the newest generation of cars so that you can, you know, dictate emails and stuff like that and have them read back to you so that you're not trying to type in text and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, but you know, it's... And what I want is the, the when I'm driving home in my car, I want my house to know that I'm coming home and start preparing dinner for me. So that way, when I get home, my cold beer, my 
whatever it is, my pizza is ready for me as I arrive. Now, do you want a robot to do that for you, to talk to you and to understand that you're ready to, to have the uh, dinner prepared for you? Or do you want the house itself, the appliances itself to do it? Well, I would want the house itself, but wouldn't that then make the house a robot? So uh, if you by robot, you mean a self-standing, autonomous, robotic, right. uh, you know, like mechanical person, then, uh, I mean, who wouldn't want a self-service robot? Um, but I well, think that it, I mean, before that, the tricky part how... for the robot, I think, is getting all the, the um, you know, the motion bit down. The house doesn't have to go anywhere. It just has to sit there and, and exactly. field my requests. So My question, though, is just how hot is this robot? <laughs> well, uh, you know, I'm personally into humans, so I couldn't really tell you about <laughs> robots. But, but uh, I mean, like, you know, the Fembots, the Fembots were pretty hot in uh, Austin Powers. I mean, if that's what the future looks I, like, minus the, uh, the, the machine gun part, maybe, you know, but that wouldn't be too bad. I think they uh, are, pay. Are those robots or cyborgs, though? So that's like, mm -hmm. a, that's a tricky question. Yeah. That's Does a cyborgs good count? Good question. So, other than robots, what do you think is the next platform for the coolest apps? Uh, you know, like I think it's going to, again, I guess I'm into food, but I think it's going to be the refrigerator. Uh, and I suppose there's a pun in there, but I didn't really intend that. Um, so what is the coolest uh, platform for apps other than robots and the car uh, that we might see in the future? You're absolutely right. The kitchen is somewhere we're going to see major, major improvements over the next 10 years. Um, right now, nobody gets excited about appliances except for this guy. I don't know why, <laughs> um, they, but they're, they're so dumb right now, you know, they don't do anything. We have to manually work them. Um, and, and so we're already seeing induction charging, um, full on kitchens built with you know, the entire uh, counter being an induction platform, you know, so that's a start where we are now. Obviously, it has a lot further to go, um, but you're right. That is a, a major, major platform that people need to be paying attention to. Well, the biggest problem with the kitchen, and not only the kitchen, but every other part of our home and office, is that all of the technologies are currently disjointed. Yeah. So, you know, you talk about having a smart fridge. Yeah, that would be awesome. I mean, I think it would be great if, like, every product that every product you get at the grocery store, every product you buy everywhere has some kind of a little RFID tag or something. When I put it in the fridge, it knows what item I put in the fridge, it knows when it expires, it knows how much of it I have, and maybe it could help me automatically build a shopping list and things like that. But how about a smart stove or a smart oven that knows when I take certain ingredients out of the refrigerator, that matches a particular uh, recipe list mm. and maybe it goes ahead and preheats the oven to 350 degrees because it, it's narrowed down uh, I'm gonna be making tiropatas or whatever the heck Ooh, I'm gonna make. Yeah. Can I come over for no, dinner? No, I'm not making them. They Aww. take that they take much too long. However, I totally disagree with both of you about that being the most exciting development platform. Okay, okay go for it. This is the most exciting development platform to me. So unlike uh, a lot of people, I'm not able to get Google Glass, at least yeah. not in its current iteration, because I have to wear glasses. I can't wear uh, uh, contacts. I can't get laser surgery. My eyes, it's just the prescription I have must be glasses. So considering that I'm forced to wear these things all day, every day, why don't you go ahead and integrate them with other stuff? You know, I mean, Samsung is coming out with this little watch that we can wear, which is tied into my cell phone all the time, and that's great, but why can't I have my glasses do that instead? And I'd, I'd actually, I love my little really light titanium yeah. frames, but I would be willing to sacrifice wearing a heavier eyepiece if I got more intelligence out of it. So for me, that's what, I, that's what I'm most excited about seeing. And that leads into the general aspect of wearable technology, which is a huge area. Uh, it, right now, it's just kind of goofy and gimmicky, but it will become something that we all pay attention to. Right, the uh, Samsung and the uh, who else is developing Nokia? Or, you know, a lot of people are coming out with the uh, watches. the watches now, but uh, those are still very gimmicky. A lot of people still aren't going to wear them in reality. Um, but if you can integrate that into the actual clothing that you wear, that's saying something. So you guys are going to be in two prehistoric cities, uh, London in October for Future Web Apps, 
and then Boston in November for the Ultimate Developer event. Uh, is there any sightseeing that you're going to do uh, in the two cities when you are not blowing people's minds at those uh, conferences? Oh, he just set us up for failure. Yeah, he did. <laughs> well, I'm really looking forward to seeing the Eiffel Tower. Oh, well, you'll probably be disappointed, yeah. unfortunately. Really? Is it smaller a, than a, I thought? A time. You're going to have a hard time with that. Every time I see videos of it, there's people speaking French all around it. I don't know why. I mean, but it's just that one it's little area by, in London, right? It's by Big Ben, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> the uh, yeah, we're going right? to try and go see um, some stuff. I, I, he's been there before. I've never been there before. Um, so I'm looking forward. Have you been forward. to Boston? I've never been to Boston either. I've been wow. like so many places, but these are two places that I've never been. So yeah, well, we're going to try. You guys have to send in your, your suggestions. And yeah. we're also going to try and shoot a bunch of stuff for Geek Beat. Um, so if we can find any cool techie stories, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I, think I know. I, just did a rap I live in the Boston area, so there's a lot of tech stuff going on here yes. in Boston. Um, what is the weirdest place you've ever shot? on location for Geek Beat, mm -hmm. a place that you just was not something that you expected or, or was completely weird? Weird? Um, I don't know about oh, weird. Oh, I know what. The uh, bathroom in oh, flight. Yeah. <laughs> the in flight restroom in a 787 while flying over Japan. That was okay. one of the that was one of the weird ones. Yeah, uh, uh, the the blue, chat room is saying foam hinge. Foam hinge. Yeah, never you, thought we'd shoot there. I didn't there. go there. You you did. Foam hinge. Three times. Three years. Foam ago. hinge. I don't know foam hinge. What's foam hinge? What's foam hinge? Scariest place on earth. Uh, <laughs> let's see. We've shot in caves. We've shot in uh, prisons. In prisons. Uh, We've shot in, in the GM wind tunnel. Not weird, but very cool. GM wind tunnel. Yeah. Um, Race cars. Uh, yeah. Ferrari. Ferraris. Motorcycles. The giant chair. Lisa's pointing the out the giant chair. chair in Anniston, Alabama. Yeah. We did a show in a pool in, the, in John's pool, which That's was right, a in little the pool. odd. Uh, a little scary with all the equipment that we need to shoot with. The thing um, is, we've we shot. Do we do so many cool stuff. We've shot just geek beat alone. Yeah. We we we've done like, if you consider the live and the pre-recorded stuff, nearly a thousand videos in the last three and a half years. Yep. And then before that, she was doing the previous iteration for you know even more. So we've shot a lot of places. It's hard to think of. Which it's one is, is indeed the weirdest? Yeah. But it's probably I think shooting bathroom, in toilets. I think the bathroom is weird. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a tall person, so an airplane, an airplane bathroom is just not a fun situation. Yeah. You gotta um, like arch your back. So I can only like imagine tried. what trying to put put shooting equipment and stuff like that in there would be. Yeah. Um, so by all appearances, uh, you have started a very successful business. Um, I'm curious what advice you would give to other people to turn their good ideas or great ideas into successful businesses and uh, and make the billions of dollars that you guys are making now. <laughs> well, the I think billions of yeah, dollars. Exactly. You know, I, I think the one thing that people need to hear before they get started on on fulfilling their dream is definitely go for it. You know, everybody should follow their dream, but you have to work so much harder than you ever think about it beforehand that you you know you have to be willing to go that extra 10 miles not just the extra mile you have to go the extra 10 miles and work harder than anyone else around you and do better do more be more committed you have a, a an actual phrase for that i for, always he forget. who is most committed wins yeah. how can i forget that that is the quote that you kind of need to keep in mind um, when you're starting out because you just have to be that committed. Otherwise, things are, somebody's going to come around you. I will never forget that quote because I, I was actually told that when I was in boot camp in the <laughs> USMC. When I joined the Marine Corps, went to boot camp, had this little tiny scary drill instructor, and uh, he looked me right in the eye one day and said that. Those are the only words he said to me. And of course, in the Marines, we weren't talking about business. Right. We weren't talking about making a video. We were talking about life and death. 
right. and uh, he was right. It, it was true not only there, it's true in the, in the real world, as Callie said. The reason why our business is successful is because we have a team of people we've surrounded ourselves with who are excellent people, who we know we all have each other's back, and who we are all pursuing a common goal, and we are pursuing it harder than anyone else, and we believe in what we're doing. And that is what you can do, whether you're starting a business, whether you want to start a show, or whether you're just trying to climb Mount Everest. It's, you just have to do it harder than anyone else. Uh, I have a follow-up to that. Have you ever uh, started a business and failed? Oh, yes. <laughs> Me, no. Ha Her, no. She's, <laughs> she's Callie Lewis, okay? Callie has the golden touch. But, yeah. So then, John, how do you know when it's time to either reiterate or, or look, for, uh, look for the next uh, option? Uh, it's a great it's question. It's a very good question. Great question. Um, I can't speak for everyone. Uh, but I've, I've had some people say that part of, of being a, a, a good entrepreneur or a strong manager is not just knowing the right things to do, but it's knowing when to shut off things that aren't working. Mm -hmm. It has been my personal um, philosophy through my life to let things fail for a little longer than others would let them go. Uh, because a lot of people say, you know, uh, fail early. Yeah, fail early and get it over with. Yeah. And this is something especially that venture capitalists like to right. say. And by the way, venture capitalist is usually another word for someone who's never done it themselves telling other people to try and do it the way they think it ought to work. Venture oh, capitalists that that generally don't know squat, but uh, and I was one <laughs> once, so I can say that. But, okay. I was um, say, but uh, where do they get all the money, though? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A lot of times they get the money by talking other people who have a lot of money into giving them some of it so they can start a fund to invest things because maybe they're good investors. And wow. that's all you really need to be as a venture capitalist is an investor. But that's a whole different story. So uh, the, the concept of failing early uh, there's there's nothing wrong with it so long as it doesn't mean quit early. Uh, in my previous career, w when I shut things down that weren't working, it was when I came to the realization that it, it was at this point unrecoverable and it required a, a blank slate. And I think if you quit too early, you don't learn very much from it. You you. There are going to be hard times. We have had mm -hmm. hard times in this business. In my previous business, uh, we had hard times. When I was in the Fortune 500 world, there were hard times. You have to live through them, and you don't know uh, how much you can endure until you've endured it all. So whatever you want to do, stick with it until you know it absolutely is not going to work. At that point, make the tough decision to stop, reset everything, and start over anew. Uh, so early this morning, and you'll have three minutes to look so I can butcher this Japanese pronunciation, but uh, news came down that Hiroshi Yamauchi, a longtime president, president of Nintendo for more than 50 years, uh, passed away. Um, I'm curious, what is the best memory that you've ever had with a Nintendo product? Aww. Mine, uh, I grew up on Nintendo. Um, so my parents were divorced and I spent my summers at my dad's. Uh, so every summer he, well, of course he was trying to make me happy, you know, all the kids happy. So he bought us a Nintendo <laughs> um, and we had uh, Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt and uh, a couple of others, but those were my two favorites. Um, and I would, because I was younger than everybody else, I'm the youngest kid, um, I would spend my mornings uh, just with the, the volume on like one. So I could, <laughs> I could hear it, but I wasn't waking anybody else up. Right, <laughs> like right. early, 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 six, five, six a.m. And I would just play and play and play until they woke up and made me stop. <laughs> I, I don't know, I, I, can't be, I can't beat that story, but <laughs> here's what I think. When they have his funeral, I think they should 
play on the speakers, the noise, the sound that it makes when like Mario dies, at, you know, like oh. when you, <laughs> they, you have to yeah. do that. I would want that for me if yeah. it was my funeral. <laughs> um, so uh, I've got one for a, a submitted question from me and then I've got some other fans submitted questions. And then I actually have a word association lightning round. Oh yeah. God. Uh, and we'll tell you your prizes later, but. Um, so for me, what, in your opinion, is the most underrated sci uh, science fiction setting or franchise? <sighs> wow. Well, I don't, I don't know if we could call it underrated, but it didn't get the props it deserved when it was on. Uh, you know, Firefly and Serenity. You know, I mean, those. It, it, what ch uh, canceled out at like two. Yeah, that did that did not. Have... I mean, if you're saying setting, that's not a setting, but that's a show. Yeah, I mean. I mean uh, um... No, I think it's a setting. That's yeah. exactly what I mean. Yeah. World or or uh, franchise, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, that one failed before it should have, for sure. I am going to go with the classic movie, uh -oh. Dale and Tucker Battle Evil. That movie was so underrated. I mean, everyone should own it. There it, is a it reason be a for classic. that. <laughs> if you look up IMDb, it should be like on the top ten list, right up there with Star Wars and uh, whatever else is up there. So what is the most, same question, but what's the most overrated one? Ooh. The most overrated, Avatar. Okay. It was a good movie. Don't get me wrong, I liked yeah, it. Yeah, I and have to agree with you on that one. I like, the, I like the concept of giant blue people with carbon fiber bones. That's pretty cool. Somebody in the chat room said Lost in Space. I hope he's saying underrated, not overrated. Yeah, yeah. Wow. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Avatar. But hey, it made a lot of money, so I yeah, wish I had made it. Exactly. What I think is cool about Avatar is that uh, uh, James Cameron built the, the 3D technology that we all use now just so we could tell that story. So yeah. like he was like, you know what? I know, I know it's going to take 10 years, but I don't care. I'm James Cameron. I've got a billion dollars. <laughs> so I'm just going to build the best 3D thing I possibly can so I can tell this story in 3D. I think that's really cool, a story of like you know James Cameron being super passionate about 3D uh, movies from his childhood and building a new way to do it. And back to our earlier conversation, dedicated. Yeah, he oh, who is yeah, most committed. He was a million dollars. For, for sure. <laughs> Lots of money and a lot of time. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so some fan submitted Wait, I have a question for, Callie, for you. If you could have any pet in the world, even a lobster, but you had to give up bacon in order to have that pet, would you do it and what animal would you choose? Oh, oh, Ian, you're killing me here. Wow. I have been begging to get a pet lobster Bacon in this office for or a lobster. well ever since we moved in. <sighs> Would you give up bacon to get the pet lobster? No. <laughs> for this reason. <laughs> this reason only. I think the boys would actually um, take the lobster home and eat it. Well, yeah, that's so what So it would be for. just useless. And so then I would never have a bacon and I wouldn't have a pet lobster. You would be be lacking on both. Now, when you say any pet, could is there any you know limit to that? Like, I for think example, an animal is the limit, but well, it, you could have any animal you wanted as a pet. Okay, and uh, yes, by, you can have a kangaroo. When you say animal, I assume that doesn't include like the human being type of animal, correct? Well, I would hope so. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't know. I didn't I know if like, that, I could give up bacon and get Alyssa, Alyssa Milano. Ethical question. Yeah. I, I just, I just want to make sure that I couldn't like give up bacon and get Alyssa Milano. But <laughs> if it's <laughs> not that... She's not an animal. <laughs> well, if it's... She's a homo sapien. Okay. She's so an animal, I suppose. If, if it's not that, then I want... I would give up bacon for that... Flaming bird in Harry Potter. Oh, the phoenix. Oh. The phoenix. Yeah, I want one of those. I don't know why. <laughs> it's a bird cool. that's on fire. I mean, what else? What it's, else is there to say? It's kind of magical, and it yeah. bursts into flames. Yeah, and it yeah. comes back to life. So exactly. That's good enough I, for me. That might be worth it. I mean, it can it can save your life. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But my, but yeah, my stand my answer stands still with the uh, lobster. Okay. I think you would eat it. Alyssa Milano. Um, John, this one's for you, another uh, uh, fan submitted question. What is the most overrated tech conference that's still going on right now? Oh, 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> he only asked yeah. me because he knows I'll be honest. You're trying to get him under no, the bus. No, it, it was specifically for you. That, yeah. that one was said, ask John this. Yeah. <laughs> Who said that? Oh, I, we'll have to go back. I, you'll forget somebody me. Asked, somebody regular, said to though. ask me that because they know I'll be honest. Unfortunately, I cannot tell a lie. At this moment in time, the most overrated is, is Macworld iWorld. Sorry, I can't. Oh, Are you South sure? by Southwest. Are you sure? I don't. South by Southwest has its own challenges because I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> but in all fairness to them, there's like so many people going there that you can't even. You, you know, it just ruins the experience for the rest of us. But right now, the one that's struggling the worst is is the one that was formerly called Macworld because when when Apple got out of the uh, conference, um, it really challenged them to reinvent themselves. But they are getting and better. And they and yeah. So what this happened year, this was this past year was was much better than the previous. Years. Yeah, for a couple of years, it was it it got to the point where we went one year and I was like, ooh, are they going to be able to have this next year? And then we went the next year and we're like, oh, that's like at least 50% better than the first year. So they did have a very difficult transition to make because they had this centerpiece, you know, that everything was built around that left. Um, and, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I need to see it another year or two to see if they've salvaged it, turned the corner and come back around. But they're still benefiting from the original reputation, which would be why I would say it might be, if you use the word specifically overrated, overrated that's the reason I would use that word. And now they will never invite me to come <laughs> speak there. <laughs> uh, that's a very interesting answer, because actually, Macworld is my, the first conference I ever went to. I was maybe 11 or 12. It was in Boston at the Seaport World Trade Center, which is where the Ultimate Developer event is going to be. And that was maybe a couple of years maybe two years before Gates bought into the company. So that, that was when it was, the writing was on the wall for old Apple um, about, you know, they were going to have to make a significant business change. And you could tell, even at, when I was 12, I could tell that that was the case at the conference. So that, I, it's a very funny answer that, that that was it because, like I said, that's the first conference I had ever, I had ever been to. Interesting. So. All right. So another question for Callie. What is your favorite vodka? My favorite what? Vodka. Oh. Your favorite vodka. My favorite vodka. vodka. <laughs> I'm guessing that comes from Paul in the chat room who likes to say my little red cup that I drink water out <laughs> of during the live vodka. show is full of vodka, <laughs> which is not. <laughs> um, I don't have a favorite vodka. Yes, you do. I do? Yes, you do. Which, you, oh, the one that, the one that you have that I tried? No. No. Which one? Remember we went to Sorry. Specs. Yeah? We have... Because if they're, we're in Texas. If there's anything that Texans like more than guns, it's liquor. Okay. So oh, you mean the one that's in the shape We of have this gigantic liquor store called Specs. Yes. And they're, is that not nationwide? It's called Specs because their, their mascot is a little bunny rabbit who wears glasses. I, you can't make this stuff up, okay? okay. <laughs> Okay. This liquor store is the size of a Walmart. True it, or false? It, it is true. It's crazy big. And it has it doesn't have just liquor. It has like gourmet a food. whole gourmet food section. You can buy like pestos and sauces and then prepared foods and it's ridiculous. Their theory is they're gonna sell you the foods to go with your liquor. As right. opposed to the grocery stores where they right. sell you a little liquor to go with your food. But that's the whole point of this story is oh, yeah. that we saw a, um, a vodka bottle in the shape of a gun. Like, was it a pistol? A Gatling gun. A Gatling gun. <laughs> like an oh, old... I've seen those. The Tommy gun. Tommy gun, yeah. Yeah, Tommy yeah, gun. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess well. that's apparently <laughs> officially my favorite. So that's your favorite because it's shaped like a gun, not because it tastes better than anything else. I don't even think I tasted it. She's a good Texan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so last uh, user submitted a question. Which side will win, the zombies versus robots versus geek war? The great zombie versus robot versus geek war, and why will they win? Zombie Wait. versus robot versus 
Geek War. The great zombie, the first great zombie versus robots versus geek war. Who's going to win? And why? And why? Geeks. Why? Because we can, we can uh, figure out how to outsmart the zombies. Of course. Yeah, but you got to deal with the robots. And the robots, because we make the robots. Come on. Except we're making them self-sufficient and <laughs> completely you would think, able to make their own choices. That's right. You would think that if the geeks are so smart that they could outsmart the zombies <laughs> and the robots, they would have thought about that when they were building the damn robot. He just likes to pounce on robots and say that they're going to kill us all. They're not. We can control them. I'm sure of it. It's absolutely false. That's completely untrue. The geeks will win, but only for one reason, and that is because they will go back to their baser human instincts and they will uh, you know, live underground, they'll, they'll sharpen sticks, they'll chop heads off zombies, and you know, it's, kind of like, it's kind of like what happened in the Matrix. We'll scorch the earth and, and then we have to wait until the second great war to see whether the robots will truly be smart enough to uh, adapt away from solar energy right. to human battery power. Well, we are already, NASA's already trying to find other planets that we can live on when that happens, so. Oh, well, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so, uh, all right, ready? We're gonna go with some word associations here. Um, I was gonna say every other, but let's just have both of you go and we'll, we'll see what happens. There's only a couple of them. And uh, so you ready for that? We've got a, the idea is to kind of go rapid fire here. Are you ready? Okay, we're, we're associate, are we supposed to like say the first thing that comes to our you mind? Say the, he's going to say a word, you say what comes to mind. I don't think I've ever mind. played this game. He said, okay. like, it's like I say peanut butter and you say... Jelly. Okay. That's how it works. Okay. <laughs> Why right. you said jelly, so, I have iPhone. no idea. Wait, what? Did iPhone. Say? Oh. Oh, I, iPhone? Yeah. Steve Jobs. Peanut butter. <laughs> Android. <laughs> I'm just trying to think now. <laughs> See, you, I, you, I'm so like nervous about saying the wrong thing here. Robot. Because I think you might Android. analyze me. Android. Robot. No, I said robot. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, just, I just think awesome. Okay. Awesome. Windows phone. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Colorful. Colorful. California. Ew. Ew. Okay. Really? No. <laughs> What's <I'm>... up, dude? <laughs> Dwarf Fortress. What? Dwarf Fortress? Correct. Dwarf Fortress. I have no idea. <laughs> You shall not pass. Okay, I like it. HTML5. <laughs> what was that? HTML5. HTML5. I know, I know, but like, what am I supposed to think about that? Work. Work. Okay. <laughs> Puppies. Cute. Kittens. Texas. Awesome. Big. Rockstar. Callie Lewis. John P. Yeah. No. Uh, venture capitalist. You uh, this was you spoiled this one already, but venture capitalist. What was that long phrase you used? Somebody who's never done it before, just telling others to do it and having no clue. Evil. <laughs> Dog bites. Ouch. Uh <laughs> Callie's hand. Football. <laughs> he said football. <laughs> okay. Football. Like, isn't that what they do? Manchester United. Oh, that, that, that'll play big for uh, the future of web apps. Hold <laughs> well on. Uh, League of Legends. What? League of Legends. League of Legends. You shall not pass. <laughs> Is that? All right. Future no, of web apps. 
Oh, can't wait. Fish and chips. Fish and chips. The ultimate developer event. <laughs> Super excited. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> That's all I got. Yes, all right, boss. guys, thank you very the much. Boston. Oh, in the boss. Oh, is that Cheers in Boston? Yes. See, I'm terrible at this game. I just think too much. <laughs> that was good, Ian. It that was, was good on your part. You you challenged me to stump you and catch you off guard. And, so and you I did. did. You can stump me. You can't stump him. You did a pretty good job. I think he <laughs> even did stump me once or twice. On the league of... That yeah, was true. Got, he did stump me once or twice. But thanks for like making me do it first so that you had time to think about it. I appreciate that. Oh, okay. Next time, I'll go first, and we'll see if uh -huh. that eliminates her excuses. <laughs> okay. Excellent. <laughs> So guys, thanks very much. I really, I can't wait to have you both at, in London uh, on October 23rd and 25th for uh, future web apps and in Boston for the Ultimate Developer event in November 20th through 22nd. Well, we can't we're wait to be there. We're looking forward to it. Yeah, we're thanks Ian. Had a lot of fun with you so far. We're, we're going to have so much more. All I right, guys. So. I think that's absolutely true. <laughs> that's it for this special Rapid fire interview style. Reverse geek inter style interview. Yeah, we're going to have to come up with a name. I know. Right? We don't have a name for this. I don't know. We're out of here. See y'all later. Bye.